Hi friends, today I'm going to be making a journal using my Moth digital set. I've printed them out, I've printed them out to show you all, but people have been asking me if, if, I'm, going to be, if I'm going to be making a journal and will I show it. So today I'm going to be showing you the journal I'm making. So first of all, I have decided the journal I'm going to make. So initially I was quite tempted to just fold the pages in half and buy the journal. I was going to do that, but I thought oh, I really want to make one in this format with envelopes like that. I love this shape, so I'm going to make that. You've seen me make uh, this shape before, but I've not done it with three envelopes before, so this is gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna show you how I assemble this. So basically you need three envelopes, and you glue one flap inside. Sorry, that wasn't very clear. One flap inside. We'll use tacky glue. I wanna make sure it holds. because I don't think I'm going to do sewing on this one. I know I normally do, but I thought, let's make it accessible to everybody. And this is difficult, this bit, because the glue wants to, wants to um, stick down before I've got it ready in position. So here we go. Oh, I did it. Well, that's got to go in a little bit more. Ah, oh, there we go. So why can't things go to plan when I'm actually filming? And out a little bit. Make sure it's straight. There we go. And then this back flap, I'll glue that down as well. It's a very easy and very effective journal to make. And then I glue this on here. Make sure it's straight. Okay. Wipe off any excess glue. Although this all gets covered up. Now, then turn it round that way. That's the way I want it. So. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a very small smidgen. Let me just check it folds okay. So that's going to be inside and that's going to be on the outside. That's it. Lovely. Right, before I do anything, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to trim off a very small tiny bit from the top. So that means it's all open at the top. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just fold, I'm going to fold this back a little bit like that. And then tuck it back inside along that crease. Make that crease a bit firmer because I can't, it's not quite doing it for me. There we go. Fold that inside. I'm going to glue that down in a minute. On this one, I'm going to do the same. Ooh, we seem to have glue everywhere. Oh my goodness, it's, it's the damp has set the gum off. <laughs> this one, we do the same. Once we've done all this bit, then we can start covering everything with our papers. This one, I'm going to, this wood isn't straight where I've attacked it with a blade, and let's use my wooden one. I want to, there's got the, I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it's got this shape here. I want to cut that off, and I want to cut it off of the bottom as well. And I want to open up the bottom on this middle piece. So I'm just marking it out with pencil. 
and on the bottom I'm going to come in with a blade and very gently I am going to cut a slit going along about So far, <laughs> how much? It doesn't matter, does it really? <sighs> right, so I'm going to cut these bits off. Actually, you probably don't need to do that, but I'm doing it for neatness because that's the way I roll. So that's got rid of those. And now I'm going to fold inside, but first of all, I'm going to fold on the outside. <laughs> all right, let me do this. Let's go in a bit as far as we can, actually. So I'm just going to use the ruler to help me make a, a fold line. Make sure that's not sticking. Right. Then I'm going to fold that inside. Just makes the edges a bit firmer because although a lot of this is going to be covered, I'm going to leave a border all around there and so all I need to do is glue along the top of here oh before I do that I need to punch I'm going to do a thumb hole here I'm going to use a bit I'm having to use a bit of card with some of my punches I've had them for a long time we shan't discuss how long we've had them because then it makes me feel old but we've ha I've had this this one in particular I've had for a long time and I've used, used it a lot and despite using the silver paper method if I don't have extra paper with it now it doesn't seem to work very well and on I'm going to do the same on these corner ones these angled ones this punch works fine so don't have any pressure with that thankfully it's much easier to do before you glue anything down. <laughs> That's why I did that one before I glued it. So I'm just going to glue that now. <laughs> Line that up well. Okay. Press that down. Where's my... Get any excess. Right. And so next job is to... Hello, can you glue down please? I should have glued that inside, but never mind. I've got to use glue stick on this one. It's an awkward little bit there. I can trim that off if you've got it in your envelope. Oh, I'll just trim it off. It's annoying. It's where the fold of the envelope meets, I do believe. So I don't want that. Put more glue stick on there. Oh, it's sticking to me. I'm going to pop that inside. Like so. So that's firmer, and I've got to do the same on this one, obviously. Get rid of that annoying little bit without creating a hole. <laughs> So um, I started doing this last night. I planned this one out last night. Then I thought it was getting late. So I thought, well, let's stop filming for now. And I thought, well, I'll have a look and see if anyone else has made a journal using this. Oh, and they have. 49 Dragonflies has made a lovely journal using this. Well, actually, she didn't do these bits. Her method was a bit different. I can't remember how she did it, but she didn't use, she didn't do this. But she did do the folding in there and the folding in there. And what she also did, which I'm going to copy because I blooming well liked it, I'm going to, she had a wrap. And I loved that. I'm going to do something like that with mine as well. So I'll link that video as well. Right, so inking. Let's ink around the edges. I'll come back when that's done. Right, so I've inked up. Little hint, before you glue that down, ink along there first this I've got ink there but it doesn't matter because this will get to the inside I'm going to cover it now um, so I've inked absolutely everywhere both sides and in these creases as well so what I'm going to do now is I am going to 
I'm going to use a coordinating paper, not one of my moth papers. I do have some moth paper that is less detailed. I could have used that, but I'm going to use that elsewhere. So I'm going to use this from this pad that I received for my birthday, Vintage Florals from The Works, if you're in the UK. Love it. And I love these dots. I love them the minute I saw them. So I'm going to cut some pieces out and then I'll be back and I'll show you how I glue those in. Well, here we go. I really like this, actually. It goes so well. So basically, I'm going to glue this inside like this. And I'm going to leave a bit of a border all the way around the edges, which is why I inked. And before I do that, I'm going to ink around all of these as well. <laughs> so I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, so then you have to ink the bits that are showing, actually. So I'm going ready. I'm ready to glue this down now. I'm going to use blue tack in the middle. Is this blue tack? No, it's glue stick. What is the matter with my brain? Blue tack. So that in the middle, and then I'm going to go around the edge with the tacky glue. It's, going to be, it's a bit difficult getting these in. But we shall manage, we shall persevere. Here we go. <laughs> Wrestling match, ahoy. Getting them in is not easy, but it's worth the effort because it looks so good. Right, I'm lining everything up. Nice. Take off the excess glue. Press it down firmly. In fact, I'm going to turn it over and press it down this side easier love it and I'm going to carry on and glue these other bits down and there we go all glued in so as you can see it's beginning to firm up a bit now but I've still got the rest to do so I've printed out some pages on thicker paper because I want a bit of body to this and so I'm going to find I'm going to have something for the front cover and I love this. So I'm going to figure out how to centre that and have that in the centre on the front of it. it. means trimming off a bit of the decoration there, but I'm going to ink it anyway, so that's okay. So I'm going to measure that out now. Oh, this is the exciting bit. So I've done, we've done the hard part now. We're just, we're just on to the exciting bit. So I'm trying to centre the mo that's that moth. Hopefully that means these will be centred as well. So with a pencil again which I really could do with sharpening, actually, because I don't like it being quite so blunt. Bear with, bear with. There we go, that's a bit better. Okay, right. Back to what we were doing. Again, I'm leaving a little edge, a little border all round, I hope. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this right. Straight. Let's hope for the best. Okay. love it. Right, I'm going to ink around that because I've chopped off all the pretty bits. I mean, all that lovely detail. Never mind, I'm going to save that for something. <laughs> okay, so yes, inking again. I'll be back when that's done. That is lovely. What I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to use this as a template to cut pieces for the back and the flap as well. Now the back, I'm just going to use something very plain, which is this sheet, because I've included one or two sheets that haven't got an awful lot of detail on them, just textures basically. Some I've got with lines on for writing, but um, yes, I'm going to cut. Hmm, 
one more piece out of this and then for the inside flap so that's going to have this on and then inside here I would like another interesting detail as well so I'm going to cut those and then we're going to cut these bits but we'll do those first so I'll be back once they're cut <laughs> So here we are, let's glue these down now. I'm going to do the same, I'm going to do glue stick in the middle and then tacky glue on the outer edges. I've inked them all up, they look gorgeous. This is such an exciting project. There's something about designing, doing the design as well of the papers. I mean, I love Stamperia papers as you all know, but somehow I feel it's not my own work when I use it, whereas this is all my own work and I feel kind of happy about that. So here we go with all the glue. Ooh. Let's hope I got it up the right way around. <laughs> I would be slightly annoyed if I haven't. Let's line everything up. Looks lined up to me. Ooh, a bit more. Ooh. Now, I did consider, you may want to do this if you do this sort of project, leaving a tuck spot in there, but I thought it might be too much for the cover, especially if I copy Barbara, that's uh, the lady from 49 Dragonflies, her beautiful wraparound. So, I don't know. So excited, so excited. <laughs> Honestly, you don't you wouldn't think that a person would get so excited about bits of paper, but I do. <laughs> I get excited about paper, fabric, paints. So we're still we're having a beautiful we're having summer finally in here in the UK. It's absolutely amazing. It's really nice. So the weekend, my son and daughter-in-law are going to come around for a barbecue. If it holds out for the weekend, I think it might do. There is some hint of storms coming, but hopefully we'll be okay in the garden. Oops, try again, Kelly. Oops, let's get it centered. Check it straight. I believe it is. Right. Lovely. I could put a pocket on the back, but I've got pockets in the kit, so I'm going to be using those where I can. Oh, I must show you. I also printed, look, I'll show you quickly. I printed it out on some sort of vellum-y type paper. It's not proper vellum, but it's nice. So I'm going to use those hopefully for something. Maybe not in this project. love it and then this bit for the back well for the inside pocket and let's do the same again so I'm just using glue stick for the middle and then the tacky glue well it's col all actually is it I do believe it is let me tell you no, it's tacky, it's collal tacky glue. It's quite good. It's not quite as good as art glitter glue, but it's pretty close, pretty close. And I like the fact that I can have it in this finer nibbed bottle so I can get right up to the edges of things, which I really like. And it holds really well, which is great. This is the fun part, isn't it? A space here for a possible pocket, I do believe. There we go. So, can you see it taking shape? It's beginning to feel quite sturdy now. Oh, and now I've got to decorate this piece, these pieces. 
Okay, so I think we're going to do the same again. I'm going to have, oh yes, let's have that little moth here. I'm going to have an awful lot of paper left over because I have printed out quite a lot of it. Got to mark out where to cut the thumbnail I'll need extra extra paper for that job sorry going off camera a bit there because I have to look I have to peer with my eyes there how does that look pretty close close enough so I've got ink all around. Here we are. Of this one. Well, I say all round. Yes, I'm going to do it all round. <laughs> I am doing it all round. I'm not going to glue that in. Same way. Ah, oh, this is fun. Right. So you don't have to do this with my papers, obviously. This works well with anybody's papers. <laughs> uh, if you if you don't if you don't, I don't have the ability to down, let's move this out of the way. If you don't have the ability to download and print, then use your it's all there. Use your Stamperia papers or whatever, or your lovely works papers. I do like those on the inside. I'm glad I have that pad. People know what to buy me, don't they? Love it. And I've got to start, uh, cut two pieces for the sides. Um, right now, I'm not, I haven't got the thick, oh, I've got a bit of thicker paper. I could have this on here. I think I shall. Now I've got to figure out how to cut this because that's the not easy bit. <laughs> Actually, pop it inside, maybe that would help. Oh. Then I can just cut inside, can't I? Now you see, I could have cut this off, but I was too lazy. <laughs> yep, I'll have that definitely. inside. Could go up a little bit. And then I'm going to draw all the way round. Oops. I'm going to cut inside the lines that I drew. Sorry, I keep going off shots because I have to look with my eyes. And the eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Let's see what that looks like. So I might have to trim a bit off this side as well. Yes, I'm going to trim a bit off this side also. I'm going to be lazy and use this. Pause then because there was a police vehicle going by with his sirens going. 
oh, let me do the notch. Let's see if I'm doing this in the right place. Yep. Let's see what that looks like. That's close enough, isn't it? Right, I'm going to ink all around the edges again. Be back when that's done. Okay, so that's that one glued down. It's looking good. Now, I've decided because I've got moth there, moth there, I might have something plain on this one. So I'm thinking of just having that, just for a bit of variety. Having said that, I'm not sure whether the colour, let me just imagine. I think it's too bold in colour. So I have the less bold one here. I think I might go for that. Let me see that. I'm going to go with that because I can also put a pocket down with some detail on as well. So I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to go this way, I do believe. I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to draw and cut. So I'll be back once that is glued in. So at this stage, you could have this just as a folio, but of course I want to turn it into journal. So I've realized I've done something wrong. <laughs> I need to reinforce along here and I should have done that before I put this paper in and this paper in. So we've got this lovely piece of sari silk, which I've just ironed. I think that's a little bit too loud on that side, but I think that, oh, I don't know. I think that side is better. Because really, not a lot is going to be showing of that. So I'm going to glue that down now with a fabri tack. Shall I? It's going to have to be fabri tack. Ooh, that's got a bit funny. Must be the warmth. Though we're having an exceptionally warm period at the moment, which is very unusual here in the UK. And we haven't had any at all all summer. All of Europe's been basking in um, a heat wave, which thankfully we haven't had. Uh, but we've had rain. <laughs> So I'm doing the quieter side because I don't want it to be too loud. I'm going to use glue stick. I don't know why I did glue stick. Glue stick works. That's why I did it. It's going to add a nice little texture as well. Right, I'm trying to make sure I'm centered. Right, there we go. There we go. And press it down. It'll stick to my towel. There we go. Right. That will reinforce it when I sew it. I'm going to trim these. If I should, let's trim them now. But I'm going to leave a little bit hanging over, and I'm going to fray it a little bit when it's all dried out. And now I can gather my pages and start having fun. So I'm going to put that aside to dry and to gather some pages together now. Okay, I'm going to put that aside to dry and now I'm going to gather some papers for the inside. <laughs> At last, the fun bit. Now I wanted this when I was going to have it as a full journal. In fact, I probably will make a full size journal. That's for the centre page. Well, that's not going to work so well in this, so I'll put that aside. Oh, we've got some nice writing paper. That will be good. This one. This one I've used on the cover, haven't I? This one. Oh, some more writing paper. That's always good, actually. Some of these. Oh, that's got something on the back. Let's see if we've got any little things on the back. That one. Is that, is that it? to go for the ones where I've done back to back. These are not from my kit. Oops. I, do, I was considering putting them in but I think I've got more than enough because I've also got some tea dyed papers as well. Oh, let's 
do something with those. Here we go with the tea dyed papers. I like that one. That's a particularly nice one. And my avocado papers. Yeah, I like those. Right. I'll have some more tea dyed ones because I can glue some of them that haven't that aren't back to back on them. That was the idea. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think ten would be good. So, right, ten, and we'll glue some bits on there. Oh, this is the fun part. Now, because I'm not folding them in half, I'm going to have to decide how I'm folding these, whether I need to trim edges off. Right, so I'm just trying to figure out a template. This, I think, is going to be the size of a of the booklet to go inside, I mean, of the signature to go inside. I'm just trying to figure out now how to fold the pages. So this is like a template for the signature, I think, that will fit, because by the time you've sewn it in and the middle bits will be getting bigger and bigger, I think that will fit in. So I'm going to cut. Let's start with a tea dyed piece of paper. That's easy enough to cut, isn't it? So roughly three and three quarter inches, but roughly it fits. Yep. Okay, so that's one. It's a third, basically, isn't it, of a piece of paper? And I could decorate. That could be a pocket. And I've got all my other bits of pockets as well. Oh, it's going to end up full. And it might be nice to have some that turn in like that as well. I don't know. I might do that actually. Bit of a flip, a flip out. Might be quite nice. So I can trim that. At least I've got lines I can follow here. So I might just manage to cut reasonably straight. go in there like that. Let's trim this off. So I think what I'm going to do is gather the papers now and then I'll show you what I've got because I might be a bit slow at this stage because <laughs> there's going to be a fair amount of thinking going on. I can't do that very fast. So, I can get... so I've got 10 pages here. I'm going to decorate some of them. These are the tea, tea dyed ones. This I think is avocado dyed. And so what I'm going to do is the ones that are tea, some of the tea stained ones I'm going to decorate and this is going to be my centre page. So that's the plan. So now I'm going to decorate because so I've got all these bits of papers. I'm going to cut off some nice bits. I'm going to either stick them down fully on some of the pages or I'm going to make pockets. I've also got the pockets that I cut from the kit. Let's have a look and see what we've got. We've got these that I want to use. Okay, so we've got all these other odds and ends as well, so we'll see if some of these fit in. Oh, that's an envelope. I've actually got an envelope, which I thought of including. That might do for the cover idea. Hmm, I'm going to save that. So, yes, uh, so I've got some pockets, but not many. I can't use the tabs. I don't think they'll fit in this. They'll fit in a normal one. 
what does that look like width wise does that fit oh look it's too big <laughs> oh what a shame i could make it smaller couldn't i i think i will i'm gonna put it aside i'm gonna use that right so for this no for the front of this i'm going to cut an area out of this to fit on here on the front because i would like that to be the first page i look at because i love it i love it well, having said that, I think I've got it on the next one. I haven't put it there. But this didn't print out very well. I can see lines on it. Oh, so I can't do that, can I? Hmm. Okay, we'll have this one because I love the death, Death's Head moth. We'll have him. Try and centre him somehow. We'll have him going off, actually. We shan't centre him. We shall do that. So we shall cut him here. And we shall cut him here. Okay, this is the fun part, isn't it? Then I've got the stressful part of actually sewing everything to get in. <laughs> and then there's some more decorating bits I can do once I've done that. At the moment, I want to get some pieces on the tea stain, tea dyed papers. And that's nice, actually. That is nice. Well, let's have a look. Going to have to trim that down a little bit height wise but that will be nice on that page so i'm going to glue that down thoroughly in a moment i'm going to trim a little bit off the top there i don't know why this isn't the same height as the paper it's slightly shorter that's odd because this was a4 paper the tea stained paper but it's a different quality maybe very interesting Okay, so I'm going to glue that on. I'm going to trim a little bit off the top. I'm going to try and do it with scissors. Because I'm fed up with lugging that um, heavy paper trimmer over there. And I'm going to ink around the edges. That's really nice. That will be lovely there as the front, sort of like the front page. You know, the first page. <gasps> that was nice, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to glue that on there. Let's take that off. Yes, I was, I've got a fairly new printer because I've given my other one, my existing printer, to my daughter-in-law. So I had to get myself a new one and I'm learning how to use it. So when I was printing these out for the first time, it was the first time I was using that printer for colour prints. And initially I couldn't get it set up properly, but I've got it sorted now. So yes, it prints out perfectly now. Uh, it took me a while to learn how to scan when I was scanning them. Oh, I can put some vintage documents in. Oh, yes, I've got some of those printed off. Ooh. <laughs> yes, I've got to add some print, uh, some of those. But having said that, it can't be too fat. I think I've got 10 pages sorted out so far. And of course, once I start adding pockets and things, it's going to get a little bit chunky. Mm, that'll be nice. And I'm going to I'm just going to do these edges as well, actually. Just so it's that's already already textured and coloured there. Yes, yeah, so I've got ten pages sorted out so far. So if I add two more, oh, I don't know if the vintage ones will fit. I'll have a look. Right. Oh, in fact, I could put the vintage one, vintage papers in pockets. That'll be fun. So I'm going to glue that down. Where's my glue? Where's my glue papers? I might do some sewing on these pa pages when I put pockets and things in, so <laughs> there might be some sewing. I'll forewarn you in advance. <laughs> right, I think this is paper to paper, so I think I'm just going to use the glue stick. Woo, come on. Line up. things inside there as well you know I, I'm going to see before I start adding any extra pages I'm going to see how fat it gets when I start adding pockets and things so this is the next day and I've prepared all my pages I've got 10 pages and it's a bit of a tight squeeze but I'll show you what I've done so far so this is how it fits first of all <laughs> it's tight but it just about fits so here are the pages so well i'm not going to add any more pages otherwise i'm not going to fit them all in 
So I've decorated the edges here, added pockets, added some edging here. That makes it tight. If I did a bit of edging on this one, got a tiny little pocket here, a larger pocket there. That's just glued down. And I've um, put some words in here, which I really like. Got a little flip out. I have actually glued a piece from one of my digitals onto this tea dyed paper. I've made a pocket here, side pocket. This is the centre page, which I quite like. Bit of room for writing. I might, I don't know. I was thinking about putting some words on, but I probably won't. Now here we've got too many things of the same, so I'm going to do a bit of swapping around, I think, to change that. I don't know how I managed that. In fact, this is probably the one that I could probably move. But yes, I'll swap something else around. So uh, glued on and sewed around some more of the digital paper onto the brown paper. Bit of writing space. Another pocket. This is done with the vellum. So when I put something in, it's going to show through slightly, which I think is quite exciting. A pocket. A bit of a flip out with some lots of writing space. And I've sewn on a bit of lace. This is uh, a flip out with a bit of writing space and a bit of writing space on there if needed. And I've glued this down and on this. And I've got another side pocket here. I've got a tuck spot. No, what's this called? A belly band. <laughs> and then I've got another po pocket there. Did I already mention that? No, it's another one. And on the back, I've got another tuck spot with one of the bottles, one of the jars from the kit. So what am I going to swap around? Which one didn't I like? Where I had these two. So I'm going to move this out. I'm going to replace it with some, I'm going to pop that somewhere else, perhaps in here. So we don't have two of the same things. As I've got one there as well, it would have been really weird having three. So see if that looks any better. Oh yes, that works okay. Well, here it is. Here's the piece I put in. Yes, that's fine. Those, oh, those look kind of nice together actually. Lovely, brilliant, love it. Okay, so I'm going to sew those in, but first, because I'm going to do that thing, that binding that, no, it's not that way, it's that way, Carrie. The binding that Barbara from 49 Dragonflies has done. It's an old, old video and I only found it because I thought, I wonder if anyone else has done something like this. And sure enough, she has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, what you have to do is I'm going to make something to go round, but you have to sew it on in. You have to sew it in here before you sew this in. So huh, that's the next stage. But I'm loving it. Oh, got something glued on there that I didn't want. <laughs> I am loving it. It's it's looking great and I'm really enjoying it. And I've used quite a lot of my papers, actually, much to my surprise. There. Oh, I love it. I love it. OK, so next stage is to figure out how to do that. I'm going to use that. It's a little bit moth-eaten. <laughs> Uh, well, they get when you um, are tea dyeing, the paper gets a bit delicate and it's very easy to tear it. That looks more like it, I think. So let's try that for size. It's a little bit, yes, that's nice. So I'm going to decorate it with some of my papers. Huh, if I can find any now, because I've been using loads. I think on the inside, I'm going to decorate it with this. But the outside, I'm going to have my moth papers. So let me cut some pieces of this down. Pity that doesn't fit, isn't it really? But anyway, never mind. Let's do it on the outside. I am loving this project, I must say. The, getting the papers done took me quite a bit of time. I did that off screen because I knew it'd be a slow job. And to be honest, you know, it, the video would be miles too long if I included that. There. So I'm good to. I don't need to ink around the edges of this, but I might do it just to tidy it up a little bit. And, hmm, oh, I think uh, I'm gonna ink around these as well. I wanna cut this down first. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's a long one. <laughs> My apologies for that. But I think it's worth it because I haven't done a making a journal one and it has been requested, so. You know, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. 
Oh, let's leave that out. Got another one. <laughs> That's a pretty pink on the back, isn't it? Really, it's beautifully inked already. <laughs> and I like this tatty edge here. Emphasize that. Yes, I did a bit of tea dyeing and I had some envelopes nearby, so I thought, oh, I'll put those in as well. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do what Barbara did in, uh, in hers, obviously, because I'm going to do mine differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have policy envelopes sort of thing and then string round, I do believe. That's what I'm going to do. Glue these in the inside. Like so. Nice. So. Glue combo again. Probably will go around with the sewing machine. <laughs> right. Okay, so now I'm going to select some more papers with moths on for the front, and I shall be back when I've selected those. Oh, this is day three. <laughs> this is taking some time to film. It does take me a while to make a journal. So what I've done is I've sewn it on this envelope that I decorated and I've added this so that when it's closed, that can wind round like that. Wind it round three times. Always tighty righty lefty loosey. And I've put some beads on the bottom there. Oh, I love it so much. Now I've got to do the scary bit and sew in the signature. Now look, I don't know about this. Look how chunky and full it is. So that goes over like that and then that, that goes round like that and that goes round like that and that goes round like that. But I haven't even put in all the extra bits and pieces yet and it's really quite full. So part of me is not sure whether to take out some pieces from the signature but really it's only 10 pages I don't really want to have a lot less than 10 so I'm going to leave them in and it's going to have to be a chunky monkey now the other thing I thought perhaps rather than folding this over this way whether to leave it like that and just have it closing like that and that'd be quite nice because then one can have tabs on <laughs> and I've got tabs made uh, as part of the kit so I don't know I kind of like it. I think I do prefer it like that. And we could have the tabs at the bottom. Anyway, decisions, decisions. I'm going to sew this in now, which is a bit I don't like very much. I get a little bit nervous. But I'm going to get my um, book binding kit out and we're going to get cracking. Yes, I'm always a bit nervous about sewing in signatures. For some reason, it breaks me out in a sweat. <laughs> I get very anxious in case it goes wrong. But we're going to do it. It's going to be a th simple three pamphlet stitch. Let's find some nice... I was given this as a gift for my birthday. Look, isn't it lovely? So nice. Lots of lovely bits and pieces. Proper snipping tool. And a lovely choice of threads. Now, what colour shall I go for? What would look nice against that? Now, do I want it? To, I think that'll go. We're going to go with this lovely buff colour. That's really pretty, isn't it? And let's find the actual awl. Here's the awl. Mm, don't know if that's pokey enough. Um, I think I might use my more pokey awl. It's got loads of needles, which is very useful. I'm going to get a needle out. It's a lovely little kit. Lovely birthday present. Thank you very much, dear friend. You know who you are. Um, to get a different needle I think it's nice to have such a good set and I'll tell you what I like about it it's got these curly needles and there's a special type of book uh, book binding that uses several of these I might be able to try it now <laughs> okay I'm going to put that aside I've got the thread out I've got the snips out I like those 
I like this sort of snip. Right, so the usual measurement is three times the length of the book. That's always too much. One, two, three. Oh yes, those snips are good. Okay, right, I need to find the needle, don't I? This one will do. Right, so the important thing is to get all your pages lined up and pressed into each other firmly like this and then get some clips clip it all together one clip on each side now i need to thread the needle actually i have done this a lot so i am getting less nervous about binding the signatures in but you know <sighs> some of us are just nervous people Okay, so I'm lining it up with the top and the bottom. And now I've got to go through. This is not easy, so I've got a lot to go through. Let's move that out of the way. I've got to go through the centre. Pressing it in firmly. Are we all lined up? Yes. Right, so going in the centre, roughly. No measuring here. You know what I'm like. Been watching my videos for long enough you know that i very rarely measure things and then straight out now we're going to make another hole about there <laughs> oh i'm no help am i when it comes to measurements you can be very precise but you know <laughs> that's not me and then we're going to do another hole up here here. Oh. I hope there's nothing I've forgotten to do. <laughs> I've got this funny feeling there's something I've forgotten to do. I don't think so. I don't think so. And then back through the middle. Now this doubly encapsulates this little um, cover as well. Back through the middle. Mm -hmm. I first started with. There we go. Whew. That was a little bit nerve-wracking. I thought I wasn't going to manage that. See what I mean? I get really nervous. And a square knot. So one way and then the other way. And this beautiful wax thread will hold it in place. And what I can do is I can add some little dangly bits to the ends, which is quite often what I like to do in the middle. Make them a different length. Put the needle away because I don't want to lose that one again. There we go, it's bound. <laughs> right, have I shown you the pages? If not, I'm going to go quickly through show you through what I've done. Bit of lace on that one. I've done a lot of sewing on these pages. A pocket, actually. I have cut out the tags from the kit and I've backed them with the tea stained paper, put an eyelet in, eyelet in. And that can go in there like that. But I'm going to put some sari silk or some ribbon through the through that. I've put on some, well, it's the leftover bits of paper and I ruffled them and I did some lace. I really like that. I've got a pocket here. I can put one of the bottles in the pocket. This is the fun part to me. Oh, love it. Oh, I've got to find something small to put in there. And I've got a bit more of the ruffle up there. I just love it. Another pocket. Now, I don't know if this is going to fit in. It's just a little bit too wide. The bottle, I think, is also too wide. So we'll find something small to go in there. I glued that on. I used some words. And there's a bit of writing space. I did a little flip out here, just for fun. <laughs> this is the centre. And I'm going to put some bits on these. Mm, probably cut out some little shapes. I haven't got any moth shapes, unfortunately. And pocket. Now, I do believe this will go in there. Yes, that goes in that pocket. Again, ribbon on there. Sorry about the noisy traffic. Oh, I've got this over the edge thing in me, Bob. I need to punch the holes and pop some ribbon through that. Got an envelope to pop in. Pop that in there like that. I see that you can see through very slightly because it's actual, it is actual sort of vellum pocket here let's pop another bottle in are we out of all the bottles 
Love it. Right, I need to cut out some more things to pop in, don't I? So pocket there I need to fill up. This, I added a bit of lace trim, lots of writing space on both sides there and here and here. This is very unexciting. <laughs> I feel a bit ashamed about that. <laughs> Lovely page there. And the large moth, this moth on that page, I love it. And tuck spot here. So I need some bits and pieces to pop in, don't I? Uh, another pocket there. And then we've got spaces in here. Now I'm going to raise my vintage papers to put things in. So let's feel how tight it is now. Oh, it's okay. Oh no, it's the wrong way around, isn't it? This way, then this way, and then this. Oh no, I've caught it in with the circle. Oh no, phew, that's all right. Oh gosh. And that goes round. Oh, love it. Isn't that gorgeous? Right, I'm going to get some bits and pieces and I'm going to make some more tags and add ribbons and all sorts. But here we are with a few bits and pieces. I'm trying to make sure that I'm using my own stuff and not um, using other stuff because it is quite tempting. Right, I've noticed on this one that goes over a page, I mean, that bit's lovely, but that's a little bit boring. So I'm going to add some pieces to it. I'm going to add a bit of book page and then I've got a leftover bit of moth wing, which I'm going to pop in there. So I'm just going to ink around this As I say, it's day three, and again, we're having another warm day. So it goes well for the weekend. So I'm hoping that um, a few of us are going to have a bit of a barbecue on Sunday, if it still holds out. I mean, the weather forecast at the moment, today's Thursday, as I'm recording this, says, yes, it's going to be nice on Sunday, but, you know, this is the UK. <laughs> Things can change instantly. But it is really nice. Actually, I'm quite warm in here because I have to shut the window. Otherwise, the traffic noise is a bit irritating. Okay, I've got to glue that on and then that on. So, glue the book. So, hopefully, I've got enough bits and pieces here now. Don't know. I can always add more later on. But I'm going to be adding a bits that um, people can find. And I might keep uh, add some things after this journal is made because this journal has a purpose. I'm going to use it as a shmiver way <laughs> because I'm very near my, I very nearly got 20,000 subscribers. I think we're under a hundred away now. So it's going to be a prize. I don't know if I dare say that word either for a shmiver way. <laughs> And the reason why I'm saying that, if you haven't heard the last video and I was talking about this, is because, hang on, noisy motorbike. I'll tell you, it's a nightmare when the sun's out, everyone goes out on the motorbikes. Anyway, um, yes, if I say the word, it gets picked up by bots and then you get all these blooming scammers coming along, telling people, pretending to be me, they clone you, they pretend to be me and then they go to people's comments and they say, oh, you've won a prize. Um, if you go here and they send you, they redirect you to another website and they entice you to spend money in order to get this prize. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I don't think, I mean, luckily, because it happened before with my last one, uh, luckily no one fell for it. I've got intelligent subscribers, thankfully. I <laughs> um, oh, love that. Right, so we're going to put that aside. Oh, I need to put some strings through. Let's get my fancy strings out. I do like these. These. Nice bit of sari silk there. What do we like? That mustard colour as well. That goes. Oh, that's the one I used in the centre, isn't it? Yes, it goes really well with this. So. See what else I've got in here. I've got this one as well, which is a more buff colour. This is slightly warmer. This has got more peach tones. So yeah, I think we'll shove a load of those on. So I've done this one. I just sewed. I just cut it out from leftover bit. Backed it with a bit of the tea dyed paper. Shall I zoom in a little bit? I'm liable to go off screen though if I do that. But anyway, sewn around the edges. Put an eyelet in and let's bung some ribbon in. This is the fun part, I always think. 
once you've made the journal and done the scary bit of the sewing in the signatures then the fun part i always find is filling it up with bits and pieces this eyelet <laughs> it's a bit smashed because i had to take a hammer to it my crocodile really has bitten the dust i'm really annoyed with it because you know i buy you know this these aren't cheap i buy them uh, when i buy something like this i want it to last a lifetime you know that should last more than a year shouldn't it i'm really annoyed about it anyway <sighs> gripe over <laughs> oh dear so yes i had to take a hammer to my eyelid Ooh, and i love doing eyelids but i'm hating it at the moment because of that blooming thing <laughs> Okay, so that's that one. So we've got that. Now we've got this that's looking looking better. And we'll have a bit of this one in here. I do like a bit of sorry sick. What I like, what I do enjoy having is bits poking out the top of my journal. Uh, I've got this little one I'm going to turn into a tag as well. So I've just got a moth that was in one of the papers that I cut out. I'm just going to glue that down. Turn that into a tag as well. It can be written on on the back, but not a lot. Not a lot of writing space there. Oh no, my glue's gone all funny. That's one thing that happens when it's warm is your glue goes all funny. I've noticed that over these last few days. I've been struggling. I'm going to pop him on at an angle like that. He is lovely. Uh, of course, I'm going to use my tag tool. Well, I can still make a hole, if nothing else. So I suppose I can still use it for that. But it takes up a lot of space on the desk as well, which is another thing that's irritating about it. Actually, I've got some, some of that lace left over. Let's use a bit of that. A bit of lace is always pretty, isn't it? Gotta have a little bit of lace. Okay, so these can go in. And now I've got the envelope, which I've folded one of my vintage papers. And there's space for writing on the back. And so that goes inside the envelope, like so. And let's hope we can find somewhere. And I've got a stamp, which I'm going to pop on the corner because it coordinates. I couldn't find one with a moth on, unfortunately. There, I just like that. So that can go in as well. Let's see now if we've got enough pieces to go in. Lefty Lucy, Lefty Lucy, that's it. In these larger pockets, I'm going to use some more of my vintage papers. Here we are. This would be great for writing on. It's got lots of space on it. So that can go in one of the pages. So tons of space on the back for writing. Oh, I like that. Shall we put that in as well? I think that those two will probably do. We shall see those down okay I'm gonna cut these down and then I'll be back so I'm very slightly going to grunge them up you know I'm going to tear bits oh I'm not recording oh, I am recording tear bits off like so that's nice I'm going to fold them how am I going to fold it I'm going to fold it in quarters I think Although, I don't want it too chunky. Oh, chunky it is. And then I'm going to 
ink along the folds. Just make it look nice and aged. And I'm going to go around the edges, particularly where I tore it. I mean, it's quite, it's quite nice to really add to the old look of it. You can go around with the scissors and scuff up the edges as well in places. I have to sharp more when I get to the ink in that bit. So it looks nice and rough there. Unfortunately, this is quite good paper that I did it on. <laughs> um, right, I'm going to fold that up. I'm going to pop that inside here. Inside here. I hope that's not adding too much bulk to the whole thing. And then I've got this smaller piece as well. I'm going to do the same to this. I'm going to wrap up some edges. You can't get a proper tool for this. Bend a corner. To tear the corner. That's nice. Oops. All the way around. I'm going to fold it as well. like that scuffed off edge it's very fine it's very delicate you can't really see it i like it okay so i'm going to fold this as well probably just in half i'm hoping that would fit and i'm going to ink on there as well and i can go in this side pocket here maybe that white is too white showing through let's get some ink on the back of this better it's not so bright now okay let's pop that I'll pop that in this pocket here okay right we're getting there okay let's bung some of these other pieces in and see what it's looking like now so I need to put some ribbon on this let's pop that in Right, this tiny pocket, I'm hoping this will fit in. Yes, it will. Ta -da. That's good. Oh, and the lace matches that. That's funny. That bottle can stay as it is. Like now, will this envelope fit in there? Oh, no, it won't. Oh, we've got to put this on something as well. What about this one? This one will fit in. There we go. In you get, please. There we go. <laughs> Some ribbon in this one. Let's use this. Let's see if it'll go in this one. Oh, I forgot to say with these tags, I backed them with the tea, tea dyed paper and also I sewed all around the edges. I was doing that last night. I did it all off camera, otherwise, this video is going to be ridiculously too long. Okay. So we need something on this one. I think we'll use this thread, shall we? Got this nice grey, blue-grey thread actually. We're going to use, uh, ribbon, we're going to use that instead. Because I do like to vary my ribbons. Move out a little bit. There we go. Okay, that goes in there. That's got something in. Now we need to pop. We'll pop the envelope in there. That will have to go like that. We need something for the belly band and something for in here. And something for in here, so we need three more items. Oh, it's getting so full. It's getting ridiculous now. <laughs> I can still close it though, <laughs> just. 
Okay, three more items are needed. Oh, I wanted to put that somewhere. Actually, if I just tap that in somewhere, we'll pop that in there. Okay, so we need two items. Something like a postcard would be quite nice in there and another document in there, I do believe. So bear with, I shall be back. Here we are, a little bit of Lord Byron on a postcard and a little bit of vintage paper. I forgot to say, this is from my vintage set in my Etsy shop as well. I scanned load fold documents and turned them into a set and that could go in that pocket for writing space. Okay, so here we are. I absolutely love it. So it's a tight squeeze. It's a real tight squeeze. I've added this because I'll probably add some more pieces to this as, you know, as um, I'm running out of time now, really, and it's too hot in here at the moment. I've had to shut the window and I'm boiling. But there we go. I love it. Tell me what you think. I've got this left over and I've got some tabs left over from the kit, but I've managed to use almost everything, really. Couldn't find anywhere else to put that. Well, I forgot about it actually, but never mind. <laughs> I love it. I'm thinking actually away from the camera now because we're at the end of the filming. I'm going to put a little pocket in there, I do believe. That'll be quite nice. Maybe some words actually. I've, oh, and I will be dotting words out about here and there as well. But generally it's done. I absolutely love it. I really, really enjoyed the whole moth theme. I've had a wonderful time putting this together. I know it's taken me <laughs> a bit of time. You can probably tell, but it's been worth it because I've really enjoyed it. And I'm hoping that um, whoever wins this in the Schmiver way <laughs> is going to be happy with it as well. Oh, so cool. Yes. Oh, I've got to put something in there. Oh, I'll find something for that later. But there we go. What a fun project that has been. So here we are. That was a mammoth video. I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know down below what you think. Let me know by if you liked it by pressing the thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate that. Um, the kit for the digital downloads is available in my Etsy shop and I'll have the link down in my description so you can go there. I'll also link the vintage one because those papers are really rather nice as well and they coordinate quite well with this, I think. But I've got a stencil set as well with moths on, which is also available in my Etsy shop. I'll link to that as well. Oh, lots of links. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> if you would like to see another journal made with my moth digital kit, do go over to Tracy Susan Mixed Media. She has done a beautiful journal. Absolutely stunning. She's used a fabric cover. Oh, she's got some fabulous pages inside. She's used my kit, but she's also used other elements as well. I was determined to only use my kit for this. <laughs> um, so yes, go over and have a look. I'll put the link to her video down below in the description as well. I'm sure you'll like it. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think about it. Do also please press the thumbs up button. That will help it get in the algorithm. I'm hoping that my video views will pick up now that the holiday season is more or less over. And um, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.